Hello and welcome. welcome. Today, Today we've got something up there for you. Today, so sit down, take a row, and enjoy. Today, Today we've got something up there Welcome to another Spider-Man class. This time, we're going to do Civil War 101. A lot has been going on recently in the Marvel Universe, as you may or may not know. We have something called Civil War that has started and has divided the heroes. Let's take a little look at how this is affecting Spider-Man and what's to come. In Amazing 529, we have Spider-Man getting a new costume, which was made to him by, made for him by Tony Stark, Mr. Iron Man. So Iron Man builds Spider-Man a costume and asks him to be his right-hand man for something big that is coming up. Now Tony Stark is more like a politicianist type guy. There's something big coming. He wants Peter as his right-hand man. Builds him a suit, which is basically this thing here. And some of the features of the suit, it's bulletproof, and it has these tentacle-ish type things that come out for battle and help him climb and all kinds of different stuff. From this issue, The Road to Civil War, as we continue other parts of The Road to Civil War, we will finally get into Civil War number one. Civil War number one is the beginning of a seven part miniseries. What happens, I'll give it to you in a nutshell here. Look, I don't want to make this too long. What happens in Civil War is that the New Warriors, which is a group of superheroes, do a reality TV series and they go trying to bust out of supervillains' butts, basically. And they find supervillains that are actually a little too tough for them. They try to go in with their cameras and whatnot and try to beat them up and that. In the end what happens, one of the supervillains, Nitro, who can basically make himself spontaneously explode, explodes a whole schoolyard full of children. And uh, actually a whole neighborhood I should say. And the death toll is between 800 to 900, including children, adults, everything. This causes the Senate to pass legislation, much like in X-Men, uh, as they want to take the mutants and make them register. They want to make the superheroes register now. Not only a mutant, but any superhero must register under this act. And give up their secret identity and work basically for S.H.I.E.L.D., which is like a superhero law enforcement. Over the span of all these issues, from number one to we are at number six right now, awaiting number seven next month, which will be the finale. Some key things do happen to Spider-Man. Spider-Man is on Iron Man's side, which is the pro-registration side. Although Spidey, in his Amazing Spider-Man books that continue in the Civil War era, he doubts his decision, he doesn't like the decision he's made, and then he starts to regret joining Iron Man. He wants to join the other side, which is Captain America, which they are against the Superhero Registration Act. So basically, if you're a superhero and you do not register, Iron Man and their gang will find you, hunt you down, take you into this negative zone, it's called. It's a prison for superheroes and supervillains. So villain and hero alike are thrown into this prison if they do not comply to register. Now. A key element for Spider-Man happened in Civil War number two. In this book, Spider-Man does something that's been long awaited for years. I don't know how I personally feel about what he did, but maybe it'll play out in the storyline and it'll make sense later on and we'll get used to it, but he actually unmasks. So Spider-Man removes his mask from the world at a press conference and shows his identity in order to this was when he was supporting the Registration Act. The second print 
of this comic book actually has Spider-Man unmasked in front of the press. This leads in that this issue here, it continues from Civil War number two, where we actually see Spider-Man unmasking, down here to Amazing Spider-Man number 533, you actually see the aftershocks of him unmasking. He takes off the mask in Civil War number two, and you don't really know what happens after. In this issue, it shows him talking to the press. It shows all kinds of different reactions from different supervillains that are in jail and whatnot, and hear about this. And the most classical reaction is from the one you get from J. Jonah Jameson, who has taken Peter under his wing for years as basically his child, if you will. Always gave him support, always helped him out, you know, even though he was a little cranky and whatnot. He always did help out Peter in the end. And just to show the betrayal that he has against Peter for hiding this identity for all these years. Very interesting issue. Now, as Spider-Man starts to change his mind about which side he's on in the Civil War, during the amazing issues, he will take Aunt May and Mary Jane and basically hide them out somewhere. She's going to give them a secret location and hide them there because he doesn't want anybody to hurt them because they all know he's Peter Parker is Spider-Man now, so they know basically Mary Jane and all of them are Peter's wife and Aunt May is Peter's aunt and naturally they want to hurt them to get to him. The interesting part about it is at the end of Amazing 537 from jail, the Kingpin sends a hitman to try to assassinate Peter Parker, where he's staying, because he's in hiding and someone recognizes him. And um, basically, they go there and Peter's not home. So Kingpin has instructed this assassin to kill whomever is at home. So in this hotel room where they're hiding, right now at the end of this issue, shows the gun scope over Mary Jane and Aunt May. So maybe one of them will die, we don't know. All we know is the whole civil is supposed to end in a bad way.